Will you call Kione and make up lies to destroy her relationship? Of course I will. Those people were living in my house without my permission and they refused to bow down to me. By destroying Kione's relationship, I will be hurting her mother, Inyoki, as well. It's not a lie because that boyfriend of hers can't be living alone in this kingdom, he's taking her for a ride. What makes you certain? Applying your reasoning, given that your husband resides on a different continent, does this imply he's also deceiving you? In other words, could Arthur be unfaithful to you, and vice versa? Absolutely not. I've ensured that Arthur is apprehensive about straying, he won't be unfaithful. In fact, I'll be paying him a visit soon. Consider approaching the situation with open communication rather than resorting to destructive actions. Discussing boundaries and expressing concerns might lead to a more constructive resolution. Hurting others may have lasting consequences. They stepped on a tiger's tail when they moved into my house and for months, I was paying high water and electricity bills not knowing that I was also paying the bills of strangers who had moved into my house. You may be angry with Anyuki, but what has the young lady, Kayoni, ever done to you? What's your rationale for the actions you're planning against Kayoni? Anyuki, her actions infuriate me. Without my consent, she occupied the guest wing of my newly constructed mansion with her four children. I'm disturbed by the potential negative energy or malevolent spirits they may have brought to my house. Adding to my frustration, she's a widow. I'm determined to sever the financial support she receives, ensuring Anyuki and her family relocate, given the challenging economic conditions in our country. Your intentions seem vengeful and sly, Dakia. Do you truly aim to harm a widow and her family? It's quite surprising. Consider letting go of these plans. Alternatively, confront them and request compensation for staying in your guest wing without permission. Lexi, they'll just approach Kayoni's wealthy boyfriend, Travis, who resides here in the Kingdom of Montserrat, to clear the debt. I want the widow and her children to face hardships for audaciously occupying my guest wing without seeking permission. In truth, the entire family provoked me by praying against the malevolent spirits in my mansion, rendering them powerless. My finances collapsed, and the whole family, comprising all five members, slipped away largely because of Kayoni's prayers. I am determined to confront her at any cost. So, you're considering a video call. Just give her a regular call without revealing your face. She'll recognize you when she sees you. Alternatively, you could involve an actress in the call for added intrigue. I've been seen up close by only Kayoni's mother, Inyoki, and two of her sons. Since Kayoni has only observed me from a distance, she won't recognize me. It's crucial that I handle this personally to avoid any errors. I got Aurora to gather a significant amount of information about Kayoni and Travis's relationship, and this puts me in the best position to address any questions Kayoni may have. Moreover, I desire to witness Kayoni in tears. Observing her emotional breakdown is something I wouldn't miss for anything. You're cruel, Dakia, extremely heartless. I'm considering moving out of this neighborhood to avoid living next to someone with your demeanor. Do not attempt to pass judgment on me or use derogatory names. I understand why Arthur distanced himself from you. It's evident that you harbor jealousy toward Kayoni and Travis. Your own relationship troubles shouldn't overshadow others' happiness. Shame on you, Dakia. One final note, if Kayoni is truly a sincere Christian, the harm you're scheming against her will ultimately fail. The Lord will defend her. Mark my words. Hello, Kayoni. Do you know who I am? No, your voice and demeanor look familiar but I don't know who you are. Who are you, how did you get my number and how may I help you? Don't you dare ask me questions, you boyfriend snatcher. What? I'm Travis, live-in girlfriend. I think you need to know the truth. What? Travis has a live-in girlfriend. Oh yes, and he's been sending his family to ask for your hand in marriage, but you declined. Once you two meet in person, he thinks you'll reconsider. I don't understand. Travis never mentioned you. However, you seem to know a lot about us. Well, now you know. 
And let me make it clear, Kione. Travis is taken, and if you try to interfere, you'll regret it. I'll leave it all for God. My mother taught me never to fight over a man. You better watch yourself, Kione. Travis is off limits. If what you say is true, he has a lot of explaining to do. And if you're lying, may the evil you wish upon me be returned to you multiplied. She's more resilient than I thought. This might not be as easy as I planned. She seems to trust in a higher power, a power that's bigger and greater than Travis. Unbeknownst to Darkia, Kiani remains composed, ready to confront Travis and determine the truth. Mother, for a long time, I have been telling you that something doesn't feel right about this relationship with Travis. I want to be free, but fear is holding me back. Don't even think about leaving Travis. He's invested a lot in you. What has he invested in me, Mother? Are you talking about the flowers and chocolates? I just realized that you connected me to Travis so that you could use me to get money from him. If I break up with Travis, you stand to lose a lot more than me. You were willing to sacrifice your child's happiness for money, Mother. In this economic situation, every family needs someone who can send them foreign currency. We rely on the money he provides through you. Mom, I don't have feelings for Travis, and I won't be compelled into a loveless marriage. The problem with Travis's alleged girlfriend has brought the underlying issues in this relationship to light. This situation is working for my good, now I have a good reason to end things with him. Ignore that lady, Kione. You eventually develop affection for Travis. I believe you were just seeking a reason to end things with him, and the situation with that woman is playing in your favor. I'm not happy. There has to be more to life than this. Happiness is overrated. We need that money. You better stick with Travis. I've sent Travis several emails and I tried to call him several times but his phone is out of reach. He hasn't responded to that woman's allegations nor has he called me in over two weeks. Don't you think it's strange mother? Especially, for someone who used to call me daily from overseas. I am done with this relationship mother, and absolutely no one will force me to be with him. If you want him so much then I suggest you marry him. Kiani struggles silently with her emotions. Days pass, no response from Travis. Why isn't he responding to my messages or calls? What's going on? Lord, help me find peace. I can't continue like this. Lord, give me strength to move on. I can't be held captive by fear and my mother's dependence on Travis any longer. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Maybe this is a blessing in disguise. I can be free from this unhealthy relationship. Thank you, Lord, for helping me overcome this. I'm ready for a new chapter in my life. Travis and I are done. It feels like a weight lifted off my shoulders. A few months later. Hi Kioni, how are you? I am very well, thank you Aurora. I heard about the breakup, you must be going through a lot right now. No, I am fine. I decided to end things with Travis, it was long overdue. In fact, everything worked out for my good. Praise God. What? Travis and I are done. It feels like a weight lifted off my shoulders. I never loved him. It was my mother's choice, not mine. I thank God for closing that chapter in my life. How did this happen? Diki is behind all of this and she won't be happy about how things turned out. By the way, Travis's so-called live-in girlfriend resides in the kingdom of Montserrat, and I don't know why I keep thinking of Dakaya each time I think of her. I guess it's because the woman looked a lot like the Dakaya, whose photo you once showed us. I have only seen Dakaya once in person from a distance, and I think that she looks a lot like Travis's so-called girlfriend. Nevertheless, that phone call, whether true or false, exposed Travis's true nature, he got scared not knowing which one of his girlfriends, or women from the street, called me that's why it took him ages to respond. Today, I see why I never had peace in my heart each time I spoke to him or thought of him. The breakup was long overdue. Dakaya won't like this one bit. At least by destroying Kioni's relationship with Travis, Dakaya has destroyed Najoki's family's source of forex. 
The family will be struggling from now on. By the way, the Lord is faithful. My siblings now have good jobs and the other one is doing well in business. The Lord is guiding us to financial prosperity and financial freedom. What? I also got a raise. We wouldn't have worked this hard to make money if we were still relying on Travis's donations. Praise God. Donations and financial assistance are good but we should be working towards financial independence. For example, you can use the funds you receive from Dakaya to start a business. I am happy for you. I have thought of that but I have no idea where to start. Thanks Aurora. How about praying about it, identifying your talents, and identifying where you can add value. You can then start a business along those lines. I have tried several businesses and I won't stop praying and trying until I get it right. Thanks Keone, I've got to go. We'll catch up later. Sure. I just spoke to Keone, she says that she's ended things with Travis. It feels like a weight was lifted off her shoulders. She says that the breakup was a blessing in disguise. What? But I worked so hard to break them apart. Keone says that she never loved Travis. He was her mother's choice. Now she can focus on what truly matters. The Lord turned things around for her good. What? No. 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 How did this happen? I thought I had it all under control. They're struggling financially though. No, not at all. Ever since Keone parted ways with Travis, doors of opportunity swung wide open for the entire family. It seems like the lingering influence of Travis, possibly from malevolent spirits associated with him, was impeding their success, but now they're progressing toward financial freedom, securing good jobs, and launching diverse businesses. No. I can't believe that my plan failed. I had a conversation with Aunt Najoki earlier, and she shared that Keone has forgiven the one responsible for disrupting her relationship with Travis. She relies on God for justice. Dakaya, I shudder at the thought of what might happen if the Lord takes up Keone's cause. It would be wise to repent. Repent of what? Never. They coerced you into letting them move into my house and made you keep such a huge secret from me. I needed to deal with Inyoki. Indeed, your issue lies with Najoki, not Keone. Having caused harm to Keone, I recommend both of us repenting before encountering the wrath of the Lord. You prompted me to gather information on Travis to sabotage the relationship, and though I initially agreed, I now believe it's time for both of us to seek repentance. Disregard that, we're in the clear. Don't overlook the influence I wield. If it weren't for my impending visit to Arthur in Mano and ongoing court cases, I'd devise another scheme against Kione. For now, I'll let her be. No more time to waste on insignificant figures like Kione and Inyoki. You lost, just admit it. Surely, wickedness doesn't pay. Wow, you look more beautiful than ever today. My lady in red. Oh Bradley, stop flattering me. Let me drop you off at your place. No, my boyfriend is around. Let's go to your place or to a hotel. After that you can hire a cab for me. After you. Where's the guy that I connected with on a social media platform? We plan to meet here for a casual outing, and I hope he hasn't left me hanging. He mentioned his name was Robert, but I suspect it might be untrue, considering I used a fake name on the website to safeguard my identity. Tonight, I intend to unwind and enjoy myself with that young man. Oh, there he is. Let the games begin. Oh, hi there, beauty. Chelsea, right? No, my name is Madame Bianca. Oh, my bad. I will be meeting Chelsea tomorrow evening. I am pleased to meet you, Madame Bianca. My name is Arth. I mean, Robert. I don't have time for games. Let's grab coffee and get out of this place. As you wish, madam. One more, please. Coming right up. Arthur, what's the deal with your involvement with all these promiscuous women? Aren't you concerned about contracting incurable diseases, the spiritual implications, and the substantial amount of money you're squandering on them? Son, you can't continue down this path. It's even more troubling considering you have a wife and kids at home. 
Think about the potential consequences for your family if you expose your wife to diseases or leave her a young widow. What happens to your sons if both of you succumb to these viruses? Responsible adulthood should precede having children. Mind your own business bar man, just keep the drinks coming. Wake up before it's too late. Just so you know, some women approach me seeking financial assistance, favors, or connections in my home country. When they see me, they perceive financial stability, and rightfully so, as my salary as an expatriate is paid in foreign currency, not the local currency. So what do you have to show for all the money you've made here? I better leave this place before I do or say something that I will regret later. Learn to mind your own business, old man. In this life, we reap what we sow. One day, you will regret all of this. Stay out of my life, old man. Arthur, your behavior is unacceptable. We've received complaints about your actions with female students. Complaints? They're just jealous of my success. This is serious, Arthur. You're abusing your position. Relax. I'm from a powerful nation. You won't do anything. Warnings pile up, but no action is taken. We can't tolerate this any longer, Arthur. Your actions are tarnishing our reputation. You can't touch me. I know how to play this game. We'll see about that. We'll deport you as soon as possible. We've received complaints against you, Arthur. We need to look into these allegations. The investigations have begun. Investigations? How much is it going to cost me to make this disappear? Arthur bribes officials and the corrupt police officers assist Arthur. The complaints have been withdrawn. We found nothing substantial. Great job. I hope you have good news for me, Larry. Your documents are safe, Arthur. No evidence left behind. Can I go now? Yes, you are free to leave. Nice job. Thank you, boss. Arthur continues his misconduct. However, despite warnings, Arthur never loses his job. Arthur, this is your last verbal and written warning. I'll be fine. My connections are stronger than your integrity. You can't touch me. My influence protects me from consequences. The cycle of corruption continues, leaving victims silenced and justice elusive. Lovely, my love. Professor Arthur. Please call me Arthur. I don't yet qualify for the professor title. You'll always be my professor. Docky arrives and announced at Arthur's university apartment. Arthur, what is going on here? Who are these women? I found several female students in your lounge and one in your bedroom. What's going on here? Dakaya, it's not what you think. I can't believe I find you like this. Is this what our marriage has come to? Dakaya, please, let me explain. I won't stay here. I'll get a hotel. We're done, Arthur. Dakaya, don't go. Let's talk about this. Dakia leaves Mono the next day, determined for revenge. Arthur won't get away with this. He needs to feel the pain he caused me. The evil that I plotted against Kayoni has been returned to me multiplied, and now I'm enduring the very pain and heartbreak I intended for her. If I divorce Arthur, I risk losing my right to remain in the kingdom of Montserrat, a consequence I cannot bear. I find myself in a difficult situation. Regret fills me for marrying someone like Arthur, as he has only brought me suffering, heartache, and detriment to my son Ojwang's life through his questionable friends. This pain is overwhelming for me. Thank you for watching this episode of Pride and Pedestals. Watch out for the next episode, and if you haven't subscribed, we recommend doing so to receive notifications about upcoming content. Before we conclude, we would like to share the following verses with you. Kindly note that the verses were taken from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. 
Proverbs 14 15 says, The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Proverbs 4 14 to 15 says, Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Psalm 51, 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Philippians 4, 6-7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Romans 12 19 says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Psalm 34, 17 to 18 says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Psalm 62, 5-8 says, My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation, He is my defense. I shall not be moved. If a science 6 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Proverbs 20:22 20, says, Say not thou, I will recompense evil. But wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. 1 Corinthians 15:33 says, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. And 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful Father, we come before you with humble hearts, seeking your divine guidance and protection. We pray against the schemes of wicked people and deceitful spirits that may seek to mislead us. Lord, grant us discernment and wisdom to recognize and resist the deceptions that may come our way. In the mighty name of Jesus, we cancel all evil plans, past, present, and future. We declare them null and void, knowing that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Your word assures us of victory, and we claim that victory over any evil that may try to assail us. Heavenly Father, guide our steps away from the paths of the wicked. Shield us from the influence of those who may lead us astray, and cleanse our hearts from all unrighteousness. Help us to entrust vengeance to you, knowing that justice belongs to you alone. Lord, we lift up those among us and our loved ones who are ensnared in immorality and sin. Deliver them, O God, and break the chains that bind them. Grant them the strength to break free, and may your mercy prevail, making their deliverance permanent. We thank you, Lord, for your unfailing love and mercy. Cultivate within us hearts of gratitude and patience as we wait upon you. Help us to depend solely on you, acknowledging that our strength comes from you alone. In times of trial, let our faith remain steadfast, anchored in your promises. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.